Hello, Language Arts Lady here with another exciting episode of 10 Minute Grammar. This is episode number 27, and it is the first in a series of about a dozen called The Next Level of Parts of Speech. So for those of you who have been following 10 Minute Grammar from the beginning, the first 12 episodes or so of the entire program were the 10 parts of speech in the order that I would teach them and um, tips and tricks on teaching the basics of those. Well, now here we are, you know, two dozen episodes in, and we are starting another round of the 10 parts of speech, but this is the next level. So first of all, let's start out with a little bit of a review. And then I'm going to tell you kind of some things that you can expect to be answered in the upcoming series. If you're thinking, well, I already, you already did the whole thing about adjectives, I watched it, you know, I know what that was about, but I have so much more <laughs> to tell you about adjectives, about adverbs, about um, every part of speech, actually. So here we go. The, if you remember right, I had the 10 parts of speech in order, and I based that order on a few different criteria. Number one was, um, the ease of learning it. So we started out with noun markers, articles, there are only three of them. Secondly was um, how quickly we could put together sentences, right? You've heard me say phonics is for reading and spelling and grammar is for writing and speaking, okay? So it is literally for writing. That's what grammar is all about. So the next criterion is that we can put the pieces together to start writing, all right? So it's, you can't really do that with just articles and you can't really do that with just nouns. So we gotta keep moving fairly quickly or at least in, the, in a uh, concise order that gives us the opportunity to teach sentence building almost immediately. All right, and so then my third criteria is that the things that are affected by each other are close to each other. So in the case of noun markers, our articles, they now they mark nouns, so we are going to put those near nouns. In the case of adjectives, they describe nouns, so we're going to put those near nouns. In the case of adverbs, they describe verbs, we're going to put those near verbs. So those are my three specific criteria for uh, the order of parts of speech. Um, you can find all kinds, eight parts of speech, 10 parts of speech, 12 parts of speech, um, and all kinds of reasons for their order. But of course, I think mine makes the most sense. <laughs> so anyway, I teach this day in and day out to 50, 60, 70 students a semester. And um, this really does work. All right. So what does next level mean? So when you think about these 10 parts of speech, I'm just going to review those very quickly here. When you think about those 10 parts of speech, what is a next level teaching on those? So the first one was articles or noun markers. We learned the rhyme the first time through. Um, and a, the three little words tell you that a noun is about to be heard. But why do kids sometimes say the and sometimes say the? Is there a reasoning behind it? And is there uh, a purpose for it that we should be saying the versus the at times? I'm going to answer that. Also, how can we utilize noun markers and articles even more to help students find nouns? My students, all students have a terrible time finding nouns, even though we had tend to think that nouns are a second grade skill. They are not. And so the difficulty in finding nouns is that they act like other parts of speech all the time. So when we are going to be diving into articles slash noun markers, I am going to teach you some ways that you can help your students use articles and noun markers for their purpose to find out a noun is coming soon. Secondly is nouns, and uh, again, I said it before, I'll say it again, it's not a second grade skill. Um, I really want to expound upon the nouns versus verbs versus adjective situation, right? Because we have um, all of these different words that could be a noun in one case, right? Um, I'm going for a run. Um, how is your running time? It's an adjective. And um, I am going, I am running is a verb, right? So how can we help kids look at something and you know it's a noun as opposed to 
um, another part of speech that it can be used in as well. Of course, that has to do with context. And it also has to do with another thing I want to focus on, and that is suffixes. What are noun suffixes? How can our kids know? Just like they say ly is an adverb most of the time, we can also teach them to say that ness is a noun most of the time. And ous or ious is an adjective most of the time. So I'm going to be delving into a lot of those suffix situations. Thirdly is adjectives. And I want to talk more about descriptive versus clarifying. Descriptive nouns are adjectives are the ones that require special punctuation. And so unless students can recognize that an adjective is not just clarifying, but it is descriptive, they won't know when to put commas between doubles, commas between triples, and so forth. And so I want to delve into that a lot more, punctuating those multiples, as well as the adjective suffixes and times that ly words are actually adjectives. All right, number four is verbs. And guess what? We're ready to write a sentence. Dogs run. We're ready with nouns being used as a subject and run and uh, dogs being used as a subject, nouns being used as a subject and run being used as a verb. And we have a sentence. Okay, so one of the purposes in my order is that we are able to create sentences with them, not that they just learn grammar terms willy-nilly, hodgepodge, pell-mell, tumble-bumble. That came from the pokey little puppy. All right, so uh, we're going to move into verbs, three kinds, memorization of being helping and linking verbs, and tricks for strong verbs. So come back to that. Number five is adverbs. And again, adverbs are close to verbs in my list because they are affecting verbs in some way, or they have the potential to affect verbs. So we're going to put them near them. And with that, I want to delve a lot more into non-LY adverbs and how to teach those. I also want to be sure that, um, the, uh, that students can tell how to punctuate adverb openers, adverbial phrases versus one word adverbial openers and the punctuation for those. And also uh, after they're so great with adverbs, we wanna teach them to take them out and use the strongest verb that they can possibly use. So I, I know I have big plans. I have grandiose ideas and I may not get to it. We may have to do a next, next level uh, next year, right? Or in several months. Okay, so move on after adverbs as pronouns. And um, I want to delve more into the classification of pronouns because we tell students all the time that possessive pronouns do not need apostrophes, but possessive nouns do. So I really want to hammer in on that and to help students see why that is and when that is and help you be able to teach that even better so that we can eliminate the entire problem with its versus its, right? And um, yeah. There are ways to do it. There are tricks that can virtually eliminate all problems that students have with that. All right, then we're gonna move into interjections. And of course, I use my interjection rhyme the first time through, my, well, oh, wow, yes, no. Speaking of that, I have parts of speech posters. I think there are 88 of them. And then there are ring cards, reference ring cards for students to have on a ring. All of these parts of speech with every, uh, every piece of information that I shared the first time through is on those posters and they are available at the Language Arts Lady store as well as at my Teacher Pay Teacher store. That just reminded me of that whenever I said, uh, my well, oh, well, yes, no, that's on the posters, right, the interjections. But I want to help students learn um, how to use interjections better in stories and why we can really punctuate them so differently when we are using interjections in stories. And uh, next to last, we have coordinated conjunctions. And those of you who heard the first round, you know that my posters say for and nor but or yet so, seven coordinated conjunctions, right? They're used to create compound sentences. They're used to uh, coordinate, right? Coordinating conjunctions are used to join. Um, but I really want to teach a lot more on using them for their meanings. Students have a tendency to create compounds with comma and all the time, right? I am having ice cream, comma, and I am going to eat brownies. And 
Oh, the goal is, you know, that they use yet and for and so and but that they use those to have a change in direction in their writing. And lastly, we have that all encompassing classification of determiners, which we determined we really don't need that badly. Right, because when we are putting these parts of speech in their right places and we're adding them to our writing and everything, they already have I've, most of the determiners that are listed and determiner lists in parts of speech on the Googles, they go under something else. Just teach it under whatever it's under. I will be harping on that some more too. You have that to look forward to. All right, so anyway, this is the introduction to the next level parts of speech with Language Arts Lady. So be sure you subscribe at the blog so that you don't miss any of the episodes. You will get an email with the outline, the video, the audio, the whole nine yards, any freebies associated with it and things like that right into your inbox if you are subscribed to Language Arts Lady. Or I will be right here on Instagram doing these live every week as well, as long as I can get this whole Zoom and Instagram thing to work out. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of 10-Minute Grammar.